Let's look a little closer at the motion path created by your keyframes. To erase the keyframes on a property line, click on the stopwatch. To reset everything in the transform menu, you can click reset. I am going to center my circle using the align menu and center the layer anchor point in the circle by right clicking on it and selecting transform center anchor point in layer content. Now let's put some new keyframes in. I'm going to start my circle at the left by typing in the value on the X axis and clicking the stopwatch to initiate keyframes. Then I will put a keyframe on the right by moving the playhead forward and typing in a new number into the X axis. Then I'll add another keyframe a little later in the timeline on the Y value. Take a look at the composition preview window and you can see a motion path. Note, this motion path is only visible when you make position keyframes in the layer transform menu. If you are animating in the contents transformation menu, then it will not be visible. You can edit this path. You can select points and move them. You can see that my motion path curves between the second and third keyframe. You can select this point and adjust the Bezier handles to modify the curve from extreme by stretching them to a complete 90 degree angled turn if I shrink them. I'm going to delete the keyframes to show you something else. If you want crisp actions along the X and Y axis independently, you can separate the dimensions. Hover over the position animation property line and right click. Select separate dimensions. Now I can make keyframes on the X and Y axis independently, creating crisp actions by default.